in this video, I'll show you how to integrate GitLab with Sony Cube and to map your org into Sony Cube. There will be four parts to this video. Integration setup, user authentication, project onboarding, pull request decoration, and PR analysis. So log in into your Sony Cube instance, and this is what you'll see. So create and add a project over here from this squarish box, and you would drop down a model that allows you to create your configuration. You'll be able to do the same thing inside Administration, DevOps Platform, GitLab, Create Configuration. And this is the same drop-down model that will come. So when you create a configuration, enter in the configuration name as the GitLab API URL. So this would set the configuration name that's going to be saved in Sonar Cube, as well as the personal access token that requires the API scope, which is part of the whole configuration that gets saved. So click on Preferences over here also in GitLab on the sidebar. And this is where you can click on Access Tokens. You generate the access token to paste into your configuration. Select a expiry and as well as the API scope and your token should be generated, which you can copy and paste over here into Sonar Cube. Save this configuration and this will get saved in the Sonar Cube. Paste the access token over here and then you should be able to onboard your projects already. So one thing I just want to bring your attention to is also in the settings, administration settings, which is the server-based URL. So you would just need to make sure that the server-based URL is set correctly. And this will prepare you for the next step of what I'm going to show you, which is to authenticate into Sony Cube using GitLab. So make sure that the server URL is based in properly without the slash at the end. And click on authentication GitLab under administration. And this is where you would then key in the application ID and secret. Click on preferences over here on GitLab again, and click on application this time instead of access tokens. Click on application. And this will bring you to the page where you would create an application in GitLab. Give it a meaningful name. And for the redirect URI, I would like to bring your attention to the Sonar Cube documentation for the GitLab integration, where it mentions over here that you have to use the base URL plus the API path at the end. So as you can see, I'm going to copy over the, my base URL, and then I'm going to paste it in over here. And this is my base URL. I'm going to untick the confidential part because Sonar Cube Web UI is actually built on React.js and it advises to not take it over here. If any app that you're integrating with is a React.js or single page application on the front end. So take the API scope also because it mentions over here that if you plan to enable group synchronization, take the API scope. If not, if you plan to delegate authentication only, then take the read user scope instead. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to take the API scope. And from here, this is where you can set your application ID after you save the application over here. So copy over the application ID, put it in, you can save it, as well as the secret. So you can copy that in too, and you can paste it in and you can save it. And over here, press continue. So remember to press continue so that the application in GitLab itself gets created. And you will be able to see your saved GitLab application over here. And you can test this by logging out. You'll be able to see the purple button to log in with GitLab. You can still log in the normal way, but click on the purple button to log in with GitLab. Press the authorize button, and this would bring you back into Sonar Cube. OK, great. Yep. So I'll move on to project creation options. There are three ways you can create a project. First of all, you can use a UI guided project creation, or you can use the web API to programmatically create a project, or you can use Sonar Scanner and, you know, using the project key inside your Sonar project properties file, you can actually automatically create a project using that method. So I'm just going to show you how to create a project using the Sonar Cube web UI. Click on GitLab because you've already set it up. And now you can see that I have one project over here in my GitLab that I can set up. And as I press the setup, I'm just going to select the default new code option, which is just using the previous version. Okay, and from here, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the GitLab CI. And this is where you would need to actually set the variables in GitLab CI. So click on GitLab CI, CI CD in the project settings, and you add the variable over here. You can see that you need to add Sonar token as well as the value for that, which is to generate a token. I'll select 90 days because this, this will be a good practice. But Remember to always rotate your tokens or secrets after 90 days. And also take note that you have to unprotect the variables so that you can use it in your merge pipelines later on. And also mask the variables because you don't want it to show in the logs that you might be sending to any of your DevOps or infrastructure folks. So this is a sensitive information that you don't want to be showing in your logs. 
right? So do the same for the Sona host URL, but in this case, you would not want the master variable because you would want to show it in the logs, but you still have to unprotect the variable because you would want the variable to be used in the different pipelines as well as the merge pipelines, which is needed for your pull request analysis, which I'll be showing later on, All right? So unprotect it and yep, so you should not be protected and it should not be masked also, All right? And then save the variable or add the variable in. Yep, with the correct base URL. Yep. Okay, so this host URL has been added in and you can press continue. And since this is a Node.js project, click on the JSTS option. You would need two files, the Sonar project properties file, as well as the GitLab CI YAML file. And the project key here needs to be the same so that Sonar Cube can correlate the project on your GitLab to the project over here in Sonar Cube. So over here, I'm going to replace this project key because I already have the Sonar project properties file. You can see that I'm replacing the project key on line two of this file. I'm going to press save after that, and I'm going to commit the change. And usually when you commit a change, that's what triggers the pipeline inside GitLab CI. Okay, I would like to bring attention also to the GitLab CI file. So while the pipeline is running, I already have my file over here because you know I already have my Node project Node.js project that's running, but you can see that I have added that last step in over there. Okay, so the pipeline is running and as you can see, it's successful. And over here, I'd just like to bring attention to the new code that will appear only after this is the second analysis of this branch. So it's successful and this is what you can see over here. Okay, next step, let's go on to pull request analysis, right? So how you can do this is that you would first need to create a branch. And from that on this branch, this is how you normally do feature building, right? You create a feature branch and on this branch, this is where you want to build your new feature. So I am just going to add a single file over here. I'm just going to call it sample JS and I'm going to add a simple hello world. This is where I can create the merge request. So this is committed. This is a new commit on my feature branch. I'm going to give it a meaningful description of my merge request, assign it to myself. And then after that, I will create the merge request, right? So after I create the merge request, you can see all these details populate and the pipeline gets triggered. So the merge request pipeline gets triggered. If I click into it, you can see, and I'll fast forward this part to show you that the merge request completes. You can refresh this page over here and you can see that your merge request analysis has been completed with all the details that you can see over here. You can even see the same details on GitLab all these details that you can see here over here in GitLab as a pull request declaration on your merge request itself so that as a team lead, I will know whether or not to actually accept or approve this merge request. Okay, so I'm going to bring attention over here also to protected branches. So by default, GitLab actually protects your main branch and that's the right thing to do. What this means is that you can see over here that the main branch is protected so that only approved merge requests with clean code gets merged into your actual main branch. If you require any further assistance, we recommend that you go to sonasource.com support, where you can review your support options, including our free community support, as well as commercial support if you've got a commercial support contract with us. And I'm sure that our Sonasourcers will be happy to help.